You are watching Outnumbered. Tension is mounting in Ferguson, Missouri again. A grand jury meeting today, and we're expected to hear of a decision any day now whether to indict Officer Darren Wilson in the shooting death of black teenager Michael Brown, who did not have a gun. There are also reports Officer Wilson may resign as a way to help ease the pressure and protect his fellow police officers. Ahead of an anticipated announcement, Attorney General Eric Holder just released this message. Watch. I ask all those who seek to lend their voice to important causes and discussions and who seek to elevate these vital conversations to do so in a way that respects the gravity of their subject matter. Peaceful protest has been a hallmark and a legacy of past movements for change, from patriotic women who demanded access to the franchise, to the civil rights pioneers who marched for equal rights and equal justice. We're told some protesters were arrested during the scuffles last night, at least they were just that, as we're told. As anxiety is growing that Wilson could go free, but Michael Brown's father is pleading for calm. Hurting others or destroying property is not the answer. No matter what the grand jury decides, I do not want my son death to be in vain. I want it to lead to incredible change, positive change, change that makes the St. Louis region better for everyone. All right, so there are two different really paths of story going on today. There's the immediate verdict, and then there's also how the government is responding. And Katie, I want to go to you first, because a few days ago, uh, A.G. Holder was really getting criticized for some earlier comments that he made comparing young Emmett Tills, who was killed brutally in the civil rights era, to what's happened to Michael Brown. And there were people in every community, including the black community, who thought that that was not fair. Yeah. And now there's been some backlash. Well, you know, Eric Holder is now call calling for calm, which is good, but he's been fanning the flames for months on this issue. And last week, Ron Hosko, who is the former FBI assistant director under Eric Holder, who is now in charge of the law enforcement Legal Defense Fund sent a letter directly to President Obama saying that Attorney General Eric Holder has been chief among antagonists in Ferguson. He has destroyed the relationship between uh, law enforcement and the Department of Justice, not just in Ferguson, but all over the country during his tenure. And because we have a new Attorney General coming into office, he would ask that the President make sure that the relationship between law enforcement and the Department of Justice is rebuilt under the next Attorney General because it's been destroyed in Ferguson is a perfect example of how that's happened. Governor, when you hear that, I mean, you have led a state. I I'm certain it was in the South, so you've dealt with some race issues. Sure. When you hear that sort of thing, what's your response? And, and if you could just kind of lay your experience tapestry over what's happening in Ferguson today. If Officer Wilson broke the law and he violated the civil rights of Michael Brown, then the full weight of the law should come upon him. But that's not for someone to decide on the streets of Ferguson. That's why you have a grand jury. They hear evidence. I honestly don't know what happened that day because I wasn't there. But all that evidence has been put before a grand jury. If they decide that there's not enough evidence to indict the officer, then you have to at some point accept that that's why we have a legal system. Mm -hmm. We have it to protect innocent as well as to go after the guilty. And if people say, if we don't get the verdict we want, if we don't get the indictment we want, we're going to burn the place down, that's very frightening. And it's the kind of lawlessness that will destroy America and destroy the trust that people need to have in their country. Real quickly, as governor, how would you be maybe handling this differently or what would you want them to shore up? I think the main thing you do is to, is to remind people over and over that every effort is going to be made to get to the truth but the truth is what we're going to go after and if the truth leads us to an indictment of the officer he will be indicted. If the truth leads us to an exoneration of the officer then we're not going to go after and punish somebody just because it look here's the point what did we hate most about the 100 years ago racism, the 50 years ago racism? It was the rule of the mob. Lynchings were when a mob action mm -hmm. overwhelmed law. What we're about to see in Ferguson could be a mob action. It is, we pray to not. me, the oh, worst God. kind of thing that could happen. Pray Let's not. pray it doesn't happen. You know, Andrea, you and I have talked on the couch about this, and, and it's about those people who, gosh, they just want to go back to work. That's right. They just want their kids to be safe when they go to school. They, they don't want people in the streets because that won't necessarily change anything. That violent protesting or the insurgents coming from the outside and instigating whatever it is, th they don't get to live that life right now. They get to live in fear until this thing comes out. And hasn't Ferguson suffered enough? Because really, who are you hurting? You're hurting the business owners, many of them African-American. You're hurting, as you point out, Harris, the people who just want to get back to work and earn a paycheck and live. So it would be very unfortunate if they were violent. I would also 
like to know what's going to happen if this grand jury doesn't indict. Does that put, and maybe a question for Kirsten, does mm -hmm. that put additional pressure then on the administration and on Eric Holder because he does have a civil rights investigation into Ferguson, maybe valid, this civil rights mm -hmm. investigation, maybe there was one that was needed, but does that maybe put some pressure on them to do something if the community is violent to say Eric Holder they didn't indict now well, plus he's already Barack weighed Obama in to say up. how he feels about it Correct. he's basically yeah. chosen yeah. a side well, I mean which obviously should. people should not react violently that, that goes without saying I do think that there are some underlying issues that were problematic there um, separate from this incident that do need to be investigated and do need to be dealt with I you know and and I don't know how to uh, you know I agree with everything the governor was saying about you know what that the, about how these people shouldn't react to this way the problem is how do you tell those people that and who can tell them that in a way that's meaningful for them and so I think it's great that the father came out and did that mm -hmm. because I think mm -hmm. those are the type of people that need to be really mm -hmm. given a megaphone to, um, to, to tell them you know not to do right. that grand jury meeting today if there's news to be made we'll tell you about it yeah. all right and more news on Adrian Peterson speaking out at length for the first time since shortly after his arrest for whipping and injuring his four-year-old son with a tree branch the NFL star telling USA Today he's sorry and won't ever use a switch again. But some of his remarks are raising questions about whether he truly gets it. I mean, Peterson says that he doesn't think that folks should compare him to Ray Rice, the Raven star caught on video for punching his then uh, fiance in a casino elevator. Now, Peterson says, quote, I take full responsibility because I spanked my child. And no matter what my intentions were, I end up leaving those marks on his legs. That's the bottom line. That's not what I tried to do, but that's what ended up happening. Don't put me in the same category as Rice. But one of the most prominent female sports journalists, Christine Brennan, questions whether Peterson has learned his lesson after he blew off a meeting with NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell. Brennan writing in a column, quote, Peterson listened to the union and gave up his last best chance to show how serious he was about doing what's necessary to return to the game. This means that his old statements including the appalling comment Goodell cited in which Peterson said that he didn't intend to eliminate whooping my kids still hangs in the air as fresh as the day that he said them. All right, Governor, he came out and he said, I'm no Ray Rice. I think a lot of people would disagree. Can you compare the two? Do you think that he can come out and say I'm not a Ray Rice? Well, I think what he did was an overzealous disciplinary action against a child. I mean, no doubt about it. And there is a, a line between uh, disciplining a child and child abuse. I wasn't there to see it. I don't know. But apparently it really did cross that line from all indications in the mm -hmm. photographs that we've seen. So has he done something wrong? Yes. Is he paying for it? Yes. Should he pay more for it? I don't know. That's got to be looked at. I, one of the things that has disturbed me, I just want to throw this out there. Mm -hmm. It seems like we put so much focus on an NFL player for what they do, whether it's uh, Ray Rice or in this case. But very thorough objective studies have shown that the NFL players are frankly not that much more uh, likely to commit violence than the general population. Mm -hmm. But we've made it as if every person who plays athletics is some kind of well, they're uh, in the spotlight, violent individual. Right? But you're right. Where is the outrage for it among our communities in, in general? Child I, abuse I, is wrong no matter who does it. Exactly. It shouldn't just be limited yeah. to focusing upon somebody who happens to be an athlete celebrity. Yeah, yeah but Adele said he's not going to have a, a whooping law that addresses child abuse. But, of course, the NFL has pressure to do something about domestic violence. Right. Should the NFL have laws against these types of things? Well, I think that they've rewritten their policies to try and address some of the domestic abuse. But I, I, I do think that there is a huge difference between domestic violence and punching your your then fiance and now wife out in an elevator and dragging her and going too far with a disciplinary action for your child I understand where he's coming from you know he needs to still be able to discipline his children is he not allowed to discipline them now based mm -hmm. on their actions mm -hmm. so I, I do not think the comparison between Ray Rice and him is fair in this instance because I think punching someone out is different than overly disciplining your child. Was he wrong? Did he go a little too far? Yes, he did. But there's a huge difference between that and what Ray Rice did. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's got six, six kids, Harris, Adrian yeah. Peterson. Your question, too, I think is an important one, and that is, should the NFL put something in place? Mm -hmm. If they are going to punish people, they need to put a policy down on paper. Because otherwise, every time they punish somebody, this is the road we're going to go down. The players' union is going to you know, rear its, its chest back and say, we've lawyered up. We're going to defend this guy.
And even if it's an egregious thing like what we're seeing with video, they're going to kind of have a point because if you didn't write it down and you didn't, you know, give it out equally, then there's there's something that's not quite right about this. How can you say that it's punishment or is it just retaliation? What is it? So you've got to make it fair. You've got to put it down on paper. Kirsten, you said last week when we talked about this that we're a very forgiving nation and mm -hmm. that people should be forgiven. And I know that that writer that I quoted from USA Today doesn't believe that Peterson was being authentic right. with his apology. But do you think that he should be forgiven and allowed to play again? Ultimately, yes, but, I, th but the th I think the reason that people think it's not authentic is because it seems like he was very unapologetic when he was first caught, and then when he gets in trouble and realizes mm -hmm. he might lose his job, then he becomes very sorry, uh, sorry about it. Or maybe he actually has legitimately become sorry about it. That's the thing we don't know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes with time, you meet with counselors, he's meeting with a pastor, he's meeting with counselors, and maybe mm -hmm. he actually has learned and ex that, that this, this goes too far and that it's not okay to have a whooping policy for your children. You know, you, you discipline them, you don't mm -hmm. beat them. There's a difference. Yeah. All right, we'll stay on this story as we always do. Well, here's a big story, college scholarships for illegal immigrants. Yeah, the actions of one of America's most expensive universities now stirring a very intense debate. Plus, buried under seven feet or more of snow that fell in three days' time, new worries that in the Buffalo area, even as the forecast calls for relief, I don't know about that game this Sunday. I don't know.